Hello, peoples. I'm uh, doing a quick modeling session today, so I thought I'd record it and see what happens. What I uh, get as a suggestion often is to add some extra life to this place. And uh, usually that's people talking about having sheep in the fields and cows, maybe. Uh, but I think this is more of like an agricultural area with, you know, uh, plants and food on the fields. But I do like the idea of having some critters around. So what I'm planning as a first experiment is to have beyond this door here, well, the ditches. Uh, if you went, you probably went here if you ever visited my world, but there's a tiny ditch here. Let me check. I don't think. No, I don't have the lowering. <clears throat> excuse me, the lowering uh, mechanics implemented yet, so I can't really sit down very well by the ditch, except, well, by sitting down. <clears throat> to have like a few frogs that hop into the water whenever you arrive here. So the idea is that they'll be there, the frogs. As soon as you uh, start casting shade on them or something or get close to them, they just jump into the water. You barely make out that they're frogs. They're just tiny springtime frog things. And I'm having a relaxed day, so I thought, well, let's just stop modeling one of those beasts and see what happens and maybe see if I can implement it also today. We'll see. I'll just go and start a blocks and I'll see you in a bit. So, there we are again. Um, just started this up, so let me enable the little experimental features that you always want to have on. So, uh, since I'm going to model a tiny tiny frog i'm uh, gonna use my scaling a bit differently usually i grab the world and recenter like this to be in uh, normal space but if i want to model a tiny tiny frog i will have to have details that are far smaller than the limits well, not very much, but a bit smaller than the uh, snapping limits this delivers. You work with small stuff like this, then the snapping limit is like uh, this. You know, things start snapping together on a larger scale than I need for the frog. So what I often do then is use the maximum zoomed out scale. I'm now zooming out the world. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, so, hmm, I thought a grid would show up. Seems it doesn't. Oh well, you'll uh, have to believe me that I'm scaled, zoomed out right now. So this will be my human scale uh, default. Let me uh, quickly uh, put down a table to work on and if i jump back to uh, normal scale the thing is huge and underground so i just zoom out constantly and check my my modeling on this uh, scale um <clears throat> well frogs what i usually do when uh, modeling something symmetric is setting up a like a, a symmetric uh, stage, so to say. And it's just uh, like a deal I uh, make with myself that I try to 
be symmetric across this axis. For the frog I'm modeling, it's not really important that this, this is perfectly symmetrical, really. But I do want to have a little reference for when I'm flipping stuff over, if I do. Okay. So the idea is to... Well, let's just make it basic green. To do like a very young frog, you know, the tiny... Shall I go brown frog? Let's just go dark green frog. Just a tiny... Um, young... Just... Uh, something that's... Barely out of tadpole stage. Because... I like how tiny they are, like that. Mm -hmm. Let me just get a basic starting shape to work out from here. I'm uh, not very used to doing a lot of organic modeling in blocks. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and I'm again working without any reference whatsoever. I don't know if that's smart, but let me try it out first before I jump to conclusions. So, trying to get some Head shape in first. Let me see. That should be reasonably realistic. I should just put on some music and keep messing with these vertexes, but I can't be bothered with finding royalty-free things to use for these, really. So, <clears throat> I guess you have to make do with the sound of my voice. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work, really. Let's see. Let's have, like, at least the eyes in place before I jump to any conclusions. Mm -hmm. Tiny frogs have large eyes. Just doing the symmetry by hand right now. Now, do I actually... model out the body from this? Should I just start uh, adding more shapes and stuff? Let's try it like this first. <laughs> I think that might work. I don't think we need this definition in the belly, really. We can always remove it later. Not really a lot I can talk about here, because this is new territory for me. Modeling frogs and more organic shapes. So, I don't know what kind of information I should divulge during this. See, that doesn't look like a frog at all. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we can 
do something about that. If like a weird pointy bumps that I know. And her legs will come out of around this bit here, I guess. And then Yeah, that doesn't look like a frog at all. Cool. Cool cool. Let's uh do some legs here first. I'm planning, by the way, to not really animate this one because full-blown animation kind of uh, works against the low poly aesthetic I think I, I I would like it if this weird weird shaped frog thing would absolutely convince you that it's a low poly frog but not by its motion so much as, or not by its uh, appearance so much as maybe by its behavior more than its motion. Guys, I should really, really start working with the reference material. This looks a bit odd. Still, let's soldier on. Do frogs like have their lower legs? More like here, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? It is tiny. Maybe for a tiny frog, we also need way shorter legs. <laughs> okay, let's just get the basics in place first. I'm already doubting my process right now, but I think I should at least Add like the most obvious froggy bits to this guy. Hmm, even this scale is kind of a bit limiting to work with because I'm already with this size and I already at the minimum size I can work with. Which mostly tells me that I shouldn't. Uh, worry about adding detail much smaller than this. Frogs always have like the front paws, paws, legs, hands sticking in like this. That, that I know. I think the weirdness mostly has to do actually with the shape of the hat, which is just wee too friggin' huge. Mm -hmm. Might we be getting somewhere? actually think that the bottom part is much more narrow like like this maybe hmm. I've stared at quite a few juvenile frogs in my uh, youth but recalling exactly how the uh, shape is and now the proportions are is kind of difficult, but I'll just try and trust my brain to signal me once I get close to the shape I want. Like, yes, that's it. 
no this is not yet it i am just acting it out um let me uh simplify the shape quickly because i don't think we need all this gunk here Maybe, maybe. Maybe have you in a little group. A few more like so. Or is that a bit too much of a good thing? I'm actually thinking of, I was just uh, beginning to talk about this um, a few minutes ago and not really finishing my uh, thoughts on it, but I'm thinking about just modeling the frog in two distinct poses. So this one is the sitting bit and it might be possible to just turn it around a little when it looks... Uh, around and then having a jumping pose just hand modeled uh, for when it jumps and lands in the water because that's all i needed to do really let me group you up Two frog arms look like this, or are they actually kind of like more like this? No, I, I think I like this more. Maybe do it a bit more like this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now it still feels kind of off. Not entirely sure what I'm missing here. Bigger, le bigger thigh muscles is good. It's good, yes. Uh, maybe I need to have you more there. Let me see. Yes, I think I'm getting somewhere. If you excuse the silly head shape still no so this is a trick i uh i don't really need it in this case but it's a trick i use for mirroring stuff i just group it with like a object at the edge of the mirror uh, plane so that's over here and then i just group it up I duplicate it and flip it and because I'm behind it I have to turn it back around and then try and place it here. Now there's something odd with blocks snapping as you can see. It's never truly exact if you start mirroring and transforming stuff. So this isn't an exact mirror duplicate. I can try and do it like uh, without the snapping and then it should be more perfect but then you don't want your frogs to be mirrored perfectly anyway so let's undo all of that messing about with some judicious rearranging okay uh, I want to lose you. 
Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, after saving this out, I'm gonna entirely nuke the head because I don't like how that is shaping up. So let me see if I can weld it back into nothingness. Like guess so. That's obviously much, much better. And now let me try and see if I can maybe kind of freehand the shape of the head. Let's uh, try and put that in the middle, shall we? <laughs> now, obviously, I can't weld this shape back to this shape. I, if I want to have it one big shape, I should really have extruded this, but I don't really need it's to be one giant mesh. I can work with uh, having them as separate objects. I won't be uh, rigging this up very in a very special way. So the mesh quality doesn't really matter. Hmm. I think I actually like this more than what I had before, but I'm not sure yet. Let me try and get some definition into the back of the head. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Again, these are the tiny, tiny frog bit, froglings. Um, so I really want to get the uh, uh, proportions to also communicate that. And I'm not sure if tiny froglings have like huge heads or just huge eyes. Hmm. This looks froggy. Yeah, suddenly. Brain is pleased. Brain so pleased. Okay, let me uh, mess with my HMD a bit. So I should not go on modeling much longer just because my YouTube things tend to get too large, too long, especially this way. Let me just get some extra stuff in place. I want to finish this one off. Obviously, can't leave you with an unfinished frogling, can I? Hmm. Push you into here. It's a bit weird, but hey, let me check if I can give you some decent triangulation here. From the side, it more it doesn't really look too much like a frogling oh excuse me hmm what am i missing so from the top it's okay okay-ish i don't like how the elbows are pointed but I'm not sure. This doesn't look relaxed at all. I would try and keep my legs like this were I a frog. I think that's better, yeah. But I distinctly remember these animals having their front hands, so to say, pointing inwards much more. So maybe I should do that like uh, this. Mm -hmm. 
that looks good. So uh, you are already good. I will degroup and regroup. And wait a moment. What did I do? Okay. Right, right, right. I turned it like this. There we go. Not entirely convinced yet. The group, the group. Uh, if you like, more like this. A bit of asymmetry is fine here. Worse, it's mandatory. And let's really shell out on these toe lengths. And then add a little flourish here with a wonky toe. And let's do that everywhere because I think that works. Right, that's that's a good froggy backside. It's a good froggy front side from the top. From the side we're not convinced. Uh, is that because of this bit? Is it because of that weird dome shape on top, maybe? And why are we not continuing the shape over here? Okay, just this, I guess. Seems better. Mm -hmm. But then we want to have like a more of a uh, chin on the beast, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's get somewhere. like a speedboat. Cool. Now, let's give the dude some eyes, right? Uh... Hmm. Am I, uh, perhaps Ruining it with the eyes. I don't know. It's it's really just trying stuff out, seeing if it strikes me as particularly froggy or not. This is better, I think. Though, I guess we should really. Um, have give the guy eyelids like this and hope that works. Ah, no, now he looks way too angry. We don't want angry frogs. Maybe like this. On a tiny scale, does that work? It kind of works. I think it works good enough that I can 
better remove this one and keep messing on this side. Maybe change the color to a brownie shade. It's way too obvious, obviously. Uh, maybe subtle. Why does he look so menacing? Oh, there we go, there's our snapping range. Well, it's not too bad in this case. I think we can work with this. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Little happy frog. And let me just give him some rounded eyes. Not that you're gonna notice, but it just breaks up the uh, squariness of it. And maybe that's kinda nice. Group rearrange. And. No, that's too much of a good thing. Okay. Just eyeballing the symmetry here. And I'm fixing. Looks a bit menacing still. But I think it's froggy enough, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feel like he can have a bit of a wider head and he's really small although he kind of turns into a more of like an alligator feel like this hmm what am i missing here That because of this bit here, maybe the alligator -y. I'm not sure. Really, hmm. I don't think I'm really done yet. I'm s sorry to say, I miss, I don't know exactly what I'm missing right now. But I do think it's not froggy enough yet. So let me try some stuff. Okay, this is really the limit of uh, my snapping range. I'll try and make the eyes a bit more round like this. Uh -huh. That seems better. Yeah, that seems a lot better. I don't know why. It's just it looks a bit more friendly like this. So. Let's hope the shape also works on this side. Which it kind of does. He still doesn't really look like a uh, very young frog. Let me see, can we like fix that by simply making, giving it a much larger head maybe? Not really. Mm -hmm. 
I should not forget that this beast is gonna be only experienced in the blink of an eye. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once you're aware of it, it's already jumping into the pond, well, in the, into the ditch water. So I shouldn't really fret on the little details, but I guess I just can't leave them alone. No, can I? And I absolutely want to have a bit of definition, like... Uh, a kind of pattern on the back. Is this it? Yes. Kind of like so, maybe. The colors are, uh, are too obvious right now, so I should. We color this in Cinema uh, 4D before I put it into Unity. And let me see if this fits more or less. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Like this. Also, mm, let me brighten up the underarms. I will do something more precise in Cinema 4D. Yes, because <clears throat> I think. The uh, toe should almost like be yellow, almost, you know, like the translucent green. Oh, like so, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so. Yes, it's very green. I want to turn this into a more of like a brown, brown colored frog. Let me do the underside, which is usually also a bit more like skin color. Hmm. I'm not really fully aware which um, polygons I'm hitting here, but should be good. And maybe, since we're, oh, excuse me, since we're trying, let's do it like so. Well, I think actually, this works well enough for the frog, froggy enough for me. Mm. Can't help but trying different colored eyes. Whereas I should really do that in cinema. Excuse me. Okay. I'll uh, run with this. Let me just quickly group it up a little. Because I already know that this this bit with this bit probably won't uh, change shape if you get what I mean this is one piece this here this here 
this is already a solo piece. Uh, I should really. Ew. Uh -huh. You are solo, you are solo. But you should really be grouped. You are with uh, accents. Okay, ungroup you. You are solo. Because I, I need to repose it in a moment. So I really want to have smart elements that I can pick up and move about. Class and class. Okay, this can be group. Um, and you can be a group. Okay, save this out. Let me test the grouping. This all seems good and clean. Yes. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's one of the arms. Okay. Put it back together. There. Oh, and I know. I see that it's sticking into here rather uglily. Oh, well. The small things, eh? And also over here. Well, we won't worry about that. Okay. Um, now, let's imagine... Uh, it jumps. Let's try and center it as best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really important to center it perfectly. Of course, we're going to reshape it anyway, so let's make it jump. Uh, should go like here. Like this, and I think it's best to have it like in a bit of a curve uh, for as far as possible with these parts obviously because then I imagine that as soon as it jumps it just gets into this pose and curves through the air bloop, and dives into the water like that and I don't know how I would jump if I was a frog but I assume I take off with all my limbs pointing Backwards, uh, like a so. This looks a bit silly. I don't know exactly why. Hmm. <laughs> Still, <laughs> let's see. You go, that's that should work. So, sitting here, very good. I believe we should be able to work with this. Let me okay. Uh, do I decide that this is good enough? I think I do. You know what? I do. It's a small thing. Let's 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 let's. We can always mess with it some more if we need to. Just getting them placed nicely like this. And then this one can also be grouped. And I'm anxious to find out. I assume it probably won't work, but because the, these frogs are built up of exactly the same shapes, that maybe once I color in this frog, 
with the vertex color on all the elements that the vertices will be the same between the two and i just can copy maybe the color over would be nice but probably not i'm just grouping this so it's one form and i'm saving it out and i'll dive into cinema 4d um, I might try and recall that. I don't know if that will be a success. So, uh, well, thanks for joining me again. I hope you like my little frog beast. I will try and take you through the rest of the process. Uh, no promises, because videos where I'm really doing the technical details often turn out a bit boring. So maybe I won't bother posting them. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Cheers.